Okay, well, welcome to your practice, you guys. It's so awesome to see all of you. Thank you for joining. So this is an eclipse week. It's the final of three eclipses. So eclipse weeks, like anything's possible. So uh, it's a full uh, moon on Saturday. It's funny. So it's July 4th. It's a full moon and it's a lunar eclipse all together. So there's gonna be fireworks no matter uh, if there actually are fireworks or not, we're gonna be feeling some. So uh, this is a week where, you know, you can be feeling all kinds of things. Your body can be doing all kinds of things. The full moon's in Capricorn. So Capricorn rules are bony structures. So joints, bones, teeth. So this can be a week where like your um, knees can be bothering you or your joints, or you might just feel kind of achy. Um, you might feel tired, um, kind of a little bit, um, or you might feel like you need to get things done. Right? It can go either way, but sometimes how we work with that Capricornian energy, depending on what cycle kind of we're in with it. But this is a really good time. We're in Cancer, right? We're in Cancer time. So it's a lot of vulnerability feelings. We're like doing a lot of personal growth and rebooting as everything's changing and we're trying to refine ourselves. So Capricorn brings us that inner strength and resilience where it's like we want to get grounded into where we're going and to in some ways like make our way, right? So um, we're going to use the practice today and, um, to really ground and center ourselves and to feel like through our practice, right, we can get solid and get our feet underneath us. Because even if the world's crazy, right, we can't control the world, we can't control the timing of all these things, like, right, we can work within our practice to control the way we take care of ourselves, control the way we attend to our bodies. So knowing what we need and, and being able to control those types of things are like good things that we can use our practice for. So we're gonna work on some good grounding. So how we'll do that today is we're gonna do some timed holds. So we're gonna use the timed holds to really anchor in the pose, to really feel it, to really generate some heat sometimes, and sometimes we'll be generating some letting go. Um, in some of the pole poses that aren't as difficult. So that's what we're gonna work with today. We're gonna start with some pranayama breath work. So either lay your hands face up or lay both hands down or one of each, you can decide. The right arm tends to be more of that masculine energy. So if you want energy to come in, you can might like, lift your right palm. If you feel like you're overly um, anxious or kind of have too much of that um, masculine energy, the left palm can come up and that's going to bring you in more of that lunar state of receptivity, more calm, right? If you need a little both, you know, just do one of each and you'll switch. Close your eyes and begin breathing. When I say begin breathing, just kind of drop into your body and just breathe normally. You don't have to breathe any deeper. Just kind of notice your breath. Find a place to begin. Find a place to notice what your mind's like in this moment, what your physical body feels like, what your emotional state feels like. So our awareness as a yogi is our tool belt, right? Our awareness and being present with ourselves gives us the ability to choose what we need, right? Through the poses or breath, through how we respond to ourselves, to each other. So we're gonna invite in a balanced breath. So we're gonna breathe in for, if for, maybe for you it's four or five, six counts, and we'll breathe out for four or five or six counts. So when I say that, just kind of find out what length of breath works for you. So exhale out. And then breathe in, balanced breathing. Smoothing out the inhales and exhales so they roll right into one another. Now, as you're balancing your breath in and out, make sure it's not forced or strenuous. So if five counts feel strenuous, breathe in and out four counts. Soften your eyes, soften your tongue.
And on your next out breath, I want you to pause for four counts before you breathe in again. So you're adding that pause at the bottom of your exhale, empty. One more round like that. Now add the pause at the top of the inhale. So you'll breathe in for four or five, hold for four or five if you can, breathe out. And then go right back into the inhale, holding at the top. Again, if holding your breath causes strain or stress, let it go and just keep the balanced breath. One more cycle like that. And then just breathe normally. Just notice after that breath work any change in your mental state, your emotional, your physical state. Just notice nothing expected. And then let your hands come together and if there's any intention you'd like to place on your practice. So with Capricorn, we're putting our effort into the practice, right? We're allowing ourselves to use this practice to create things, to um, release things. So if there's anything you want to practice for or with, you can bring it onto your mat. And then when you're ready, you're gonna stand up and we're gonna go into a wide leg forward fold. So you're gonna step your legs as wide as you'd like and you can put your head on a block and if you had two blocks, I could put my head on the block. I might need it lower. So I can be as wide apart as I'd like. Okay, toes are forward, so they're not turned out and they're not turned in. You have a balanced weight between your heel and your ball now. So we're gonna stay here for a little bit. So I wanna make sure that you're comfortable. Another option is to back up to a wall and let your sitting bones be on a wall so you're supported. Let your head drape. Really relax your tongue, your upper palate. And we're just gonna sink in here for a little bit. So if those of you that have like minds that like to wander, and I'm one of you, uh, maybe, if anyone else is like that. So you can count your breaths, or you can pick a part of your body to kind of watch and gaze at through your awareness. I'm just kind of taking this time to feel into your body, to breathe, to let go of heaviness in the neck, the jaw, the shoulders. Kind of noticing what the hamstrings feel like, the inner thighs. You can let the hands relax. They can rest gently. You can hold on to your feet, lots of options. Kind of feel for if there is weight at the inner and the outer arch of your foot. Maybe you can feel a reach from your inner thighs into that inner arch. And a slight lift from the outer arch to your hips. So can you kind of visualize that with your mind sight? See if you can fully extend through your knees. 
See if you can line up your pubic bone to be equally between both sides of the hip. So you're not leaning or tilting the pubic bone to the right or the left. It's right there in the center. And if you're not sure about balancing the weight between the ball mounds and the heels of your feet, you can move forward and back until you can start to feel the differences. Keep your breath smooth and easy. Doesn't have to necessarily be super deep. It can just be natural, but just be aware of your breath so that you can be aware if you unconsciously hold your breath at any point. Or maybe you clench your jaw at any point. Totally okay if the mind wanders. You can just watch it do that. And then anchor your awareness back into your body. You have about one more minute. Just letting this time be this container for which we can hold our experience. We can kind of allow it to be this time where we get to be with ourselves and take care of ourselves and also direct our energy. We have about five more breaths. As you're ready, you're going to turn towards the top of your mat, wherever that is. You're going to come to a forward fold. Okay, we're going to come to a halfway lift, stretch long. Exhale, fold. And you can roll or bend your knees and flat back all the way up. Hands to the heart. We'll do that again. Arms stretch up, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Long spine, come up to your shins, broaden your chest, fold forward. Either roll or flat back your way up, arms stretch. Hands to the heart. Keep going, maybe a couple more, reach up. Exhale, fold. Long spine, you can stay with your breath. Fold again, arms stretch all the way up. Hands to the heart. Arms stretch up, last one. Fold forward, exhale. Long spine, inhale. Fold again and then step on back to down dog. And here's your first one minute hold. So just a one minute hold, just to know it doesn't mean that you uh, stay still. What it means is that we're in this shape for a minute. So something you might need to move around is you might enjoy staying still. And just knowing that there's a minute and you know there's a beginning and an end. And maybe you'll pick some new places to focal, focus your awareness on. So maybe it's the collarbones for this one. Maybe it's letting the neck be long in all four sides. Maybe it's feeling an equal reach through your inner and outer heel. Spreading out the webbing of your fingers from the thumb to the baby finger, your pinky finger. Stretching out through the thumb line and the index finger line and making sure that both edges of those finger pads and finger roots are equally rooted. And your jaw relax. And then as you're ready, we're gonna come to all fours. So here's the flow we're gonna do. Okay, so you're gonna come back to child's pose. We're gonna come to all fours and down dog. And we're going to slide forward to plank, all fours, child's pose, all fours, downward facing dog. And that's their flow for a minute. Plank, knees down, child's pose, all fours, downward facing dog. And you can go as slow as you want. Plank, knees down, child's pose. Tuck toes, downward facing dog. Knees down. And 
Yeah, probably one more. If you forget it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> now come into plank and hold your plank. So this is gonna be our minute. If you need at any point to put your knees down, please do. But can you feel your front ribs drawing towards your core? Can you feel your heels reach back? And again, you can put your knees down at any point. Can you feel your front body zipped up towards your spine, towards your back body? Can you feel your tailbone lengthen towards your heels? Collarbones broadening forward. And if again, if you need to put knees down, it's totally fine. You're still in plank. Find your breath. How can you utilize your strength more balanced through your body? So the chest, if that starts to wear out, how do you engage the thighs a little more? How do you feel your core zip up and lighten the load of your wrist? You're almost there, you've got 15 seconds. Find that nice, strong, good breath. You've got this for five seconds. Child's pose will be next, so we got to reprieve. And ready, child's pose. So you keep your hands forward. If you want to walk your hands back, you're more than welcome to do that. It can be any version of child's pose, okay? So feel your hip creases soften. So there's tension at the front of the hips. Just imagining a softening happening at the front of the hips. You can always tuck your toes under if this is not comfortable for the ankles. Feel your belly as you breathe in, press against your thighs. And as you breathe out, feel the belly kind of come in towards your body, towards the back of the pelvis. Let your forehead relax and soften towards the earth. Jaw relaxes, skin relaxes. So we have 10 seconds, we'll be rolling on our back and coming right into bridge. So as you're ready, take another deep breath and then come on back to uh, bridge pose. All right, lift on up into bridge. So your bridge can be with a block underneath, your legs, your shoulder width apart. Arms can do anything, friends. So you can go goal pose, you can interlace them behind you. So go ahead and wiggle your toes for a moment so that you can feel from the big toe all the way to the baby toe rolling outward of your arch. And then engage the press of your heels and then allow your thigh bones to reach forward, almost like you're pressing forward through the toes. There's more space up in front of the hips. Relax your jaw, relax your neck. Feel the strength of the back of your body, lifting your hips. So keep on, you have about five more seconds. We're gonna do crow pose on your back to handstand. So hands go behind your head if you want, otherwise you can reach your hands forward. Then you can even take your legs up or straight down. So it's crow pose. And then either arms and legs extend, or you can do crow pose, legs come up. Crow pose, arms and legs extend. That's a little bit more challenging than legs and arms up. Okay. You just choose. Use your breath. If there's any strain in the low back, you want to put your legs higher. As you're lifting up, if you need a little bit of support through the neck, you can totally do this. So I want you to feel it. Heels press in. Keep breathing. So showing you lots of options. Ribs move to hips, tailbone lengthens. You're almost there. Five more seconds. We're gonna be going into reverse tabletop next. So you can either sit like this and just open through your chest, or if you're able to lift your hips, go ahead. So as I'm lifting, my neck can be long, and I can look towards the ceiling, or I can gaze towards my navel. So I'm pressing the mat apart, trying to make it a little wider. 
as well as kind of feeling those thumbs a little bit hug inward. So I'm doing both. You're going to feel your glutes again, very similar to bridge. Remember, if you need a break, just put your hips down and stretch to your chest. So that's a good one if you're feeling like this is too much. Okay. Nice deep breaths. Keep lengthening through your tailbone. As you press down through your heels, you'll feel the engagement of your glutes. We want to feel right where the glutes and the hamstrings meet. And that's where we're doing the predominance of the work. Okay, you've got 10 more seconds. The next pose will be on your back, and you'll be dropping your knees side to side. And knee drops. Okay, as you're ready, set the hips down. And then take your arms out to the side, palms up or down, bend your knees. And on the exhale, let your legs drop to one side. Inhale, come to the center. You're just going to be doing this side to side at your own pace. If you want more of a challenge, straighten your legs. I'm feeling my shoulders anchor and my hips move in the twist. So I, I could squeeze my heels together but keep my knees open. That's totally fine. Yeah, nice, you guys. You can lay your legs on the floor. You can keep them hovering. It's totally up to you. Just using the strength of your core to do this. Keep going. You guys got it. We're going to be rolling onto our belly next. Yeah, good stabilization, you guys, through your shoulders. Awesome. We're going to be doing what's called sphinx roll-ups next. So uh, I'll show you. And then when you're ready, you'll join me. Elbows underneath shoulders. I'm going to pull up through my chest, and I'll stretch. Then I'll use my core to roll up nice and slowly onto my forearms. Then I'll roll my thighs down. Inhale, lift my chest. Exhale, press through my forearms, pull my ribs, my belly, my thighs back, and then roll down. If this is too much, stay in sphinx and just stretch through the core. So I want to feel the core really working as I push down to my forearms. I'll pull the ribs and the heart towards the back body. Yeah, keep going, you guys. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Elbows are right under shoulders. So make sure that your elbow and shoulder is in one line. Keep your breath going. We're going to be on the belly again for our last one. I'm just going to show it to you. You've got five more seconds. I'm going to lay my hands as high at my back as I can. I'm going to turn my head to one side. Then I'm going to lift arms and legs, and I'm going to switch. So my arms lay, I reach up, and I switch with hands on top. Reach up, switch. I'm just laying the back of my hands on my mat. So big breath, pull your belly away from the mat as you lift. Shoulders draw back, wrists draw down towards your toes. Really let that release happen as you turn your head. You're getting a little neck stretch as we do this. Got it. You got 10 more seconds. We're going to be going into a side plank next. So you can either alternate going back through downward dog or you can hold one side. So what I mean by that is I can come side plank and then I can either come back and switch or I can hold on one side for the entire neck. Okay, so if I'm holding on one side, options are knees down. Options are both legs straight. So we worked on shoulders last month, so you get to put all that good practice into work. So I'm pressing from my shoulder blades into the mat. So I'm pushing away. I'm feeling that line of energy from the scapula all the way through the baby uh, finger line. And from the chest, I'm pressing through my thumb line. So I'm feeling an elongation through the scapula and the chest. You're almost there, friends. 
Just remember if you're alternating, you'll alternate again the next time. We're going to be doing a standing forward fold next. So you have a few more seconds. Keep breathing. Okay, put your hands down, walk your feet towards your hands. And again, you can use a block, or you can use your hands under on your uh, elbow creases. You can even grab behind and elongate your neck. I sometimes like this because it helps me lengthen the back of my neck. Kind of hook my arms like right um, in that ear notch. Then I can just kind of traction my neck long. Feel free to bend your knees as much as you need. Let the pelvis dip forward, so that might indicate that you need to bend your knees if your pelvis tends to dip back. Go ahead and widen that arch from the medial side to the lateral side of your foot. Feel your shin bones rock back. As you feel your sitting bones reach away from your heels. Almost there, are we going to go back to side plank, second side. Yeah, alternating side plank as we did, or you're holding. So I'm just going to switch sides so that I'm not <laughs> facing away from you. So we're going to plug into the shoulder, so that arm bone, feel it hug into the shoulder joint just for that stability, and then elongate through the tissues, right? So the joint feels connected to the muscles. But we elongate the tissues. You can almost trace a line from chest to thumb and from shoulder blades to pinky. Keep your breath going. Feel the strength of our core. This is our core series. So we're through this section, we're trying to get our center. So feeling connected to the center of our body. Okay, you're almost there. You're going to step one leg forward in just a moment for a high lunge. So you're going to choose which one. So either way, step one leg forward. We're going to go to high lunge. So take your time. And we're going to rest the hands on the, on the top of the head. And with this, I want you to feel that lift of your head into your hands. Feel that back thigh lift, especially the inner thigh portion of your back thigh. Heel lifts, front shin releases forward. And my belly is drawing back and I'm feeling that core activation lift towards my heart and then that heart energy lift towards my head. So even though my hands are on my head, I can feel my head in a sense lifting into my hands. Feel the shoulders drop. Keep your breath going. Okay, go ahead and drop that back knee down. You're going to come to a low lunge and you're going to hook your palms and reach up. You can squeeze with your biceps, your ears. You have a little pocket to lift your head if you want. That doesn't work. Keep your elbows wide. So let the hips release forward. You can kind of feel that back knee draw down and into the mat as you reach through your big toe side of your back foot. Feel that front shin release forward, front hip crease soften. Belly draws back and we feel like in that same lift that we felt before from the pelvic core to your solar plexus, to the heart, to the head. If you need to have your hands down, please do. Nice big breath. Soften that jaw and your neck. Almost there. Then hands down. We're going to come to a lizard lunge. So turn your toes out 45 degrees. You can even walk your uh, foot forward. And then come down to your left forearm and reach out through your right arm. So you can put your arm on a block if you need. Feel free to roll to the edge of your right foot if you'd like that. You don't have to. 
So again, with my left arm, I'm kind of just allowing my body to release. And as my right shoulder drops down, I reach that outer border of the right shoulder. So it's more of that lateral shoulder stretch, side body stretch. Always know you can put props underneath your arms. You can also stay on your hands. Big breaths. Connect to that earth beneath you, holding you up. Your mat, the floor that you're on. Kind of feeling that connection to things that are solid, stable, and unmoving. Okay, so forward into Malasana. So that's our squat pose. So you can either be here, kind of high, or you can be low. Okay, so you might even move around side to side in your Malasana. Okay, I could also put a block underneath me. So we're here for a minute, so if you need that, put a block underneath. You can have your feet as wide as you want. And again, remember the poses don't have to be stagnant. So if you prefer to move in your poses, move. If you prefer to kind of let yourself sink, do that. If you prefer to feel yourself lift, do that. <sighs> Keep your breath going. Just kind of let yourself be held in that container of time, knowing that there is an end to each pose. And so can you remain aware? Go ahead and stand all the way up. Turn to the opposite side because we're going to be in high lunge on this side. Remember what hand was on top. Can do a different little interlace if you want. Lay your hands on your head. Come into your high lunge. So it's easy for the front ribs to float forward. So pull them back a bit. Feel that container of the core. Allow that front shin to move forward and that back thigh and forward are lifted. Then from that container of your core strength, lift up into your hands. Settle into your breath. Kind of invite in that strong sensation of holding these shapes as a way to kind of practice your good breath work. And releasing tension out of areas that you don't have to hold it. So if you notice that when your legs get all fired up, that your jaw does, or your neck, see if you can relax the parts that aren't working. So maybe it's a chance to relax the shoulders further. Okay, come on down to the low lunge. So remember, we're going to allow the hips to melt forward. Hook your thumbs the non-habit forming way and lift up. So there could be a slight arch back if you like, but again, I could always just pull the thumbs apart. To kind of get the shoulders to widen a bit. You choose. Let the pelvis release forward, but again, we're lifting out of the pelvis so that we don't feel that back thigh bone kind of pressing deeply into the front hip. We kind of feel it tilt back a bit by the lift of the core. Let your front hip crease soften. Release the front chin forward as the back chin releases back. Let your breath be smooth and steady. You're almost there, five seconds. And lizard lunge. Take your hands down, you'll walk your front foot over to the right, 45 degrees. Left up, forearm down, right arm reaches. Remember your options are to peel the toes back and roll to the outer arch of your foot. Realize I did the same leg twice. I'm like, wow, this feels very familiar. <laughs> Guess I'll get it extra. Let the breath settle in. Okay, 
We'll be doing a standing horse pose next. So you might stay low to transfer, but you're still in here. So remain in your pose for the next five seconds. Just telling you what's next. So as you're ready, tuck your back toes under and then turn to that wide stance, toes out, heels in, and then climb on up. So one option is to kind of let your hands drip towards your knees and hinge forward and then use the hands to widen the thigh. So I kind of like this one, it kind of irons off the low back. If you prefer to be more upright, you can open your chest, right? I can do different things if I prefer. And again, that same work with the pubic bone. Noticing if the pubic bone tends to uh, drift to one side or the other, see if you can keep it right there in the center. You may say, I don't know how to tell that. Just kind of use your awareness to feel what side feels shorter. Really, a lot of this is just you never know. You just do your best to um, learn your body and listen and try and be aware, even if you don't know that it's what you think it is. Okay, we have five more seconds. We're almost there. We'll be standing all the way up. And as you're ready, stand up. Okay, we're going to do a standing side bend, but for only 30 seconds on each. So you can either grab a wrist and stretch to one side. You can have a hand at the waist, or you can go Vera Mudra, okay? So when I have both heels firmly planted, try not to twist your torso, so both hip points forward. I use my bottom arm to really lengthen that hip that's uh, getting the stretch. It's okay to move your hips a little bit to the left. Just keep both heels firmly planted. You have one more breath on this side, and then let's switch over to the second side. Notice what heel is lighter. Can you even up the heel pressure a little bit? Keep your breath going. Use that bottom arm to lengthen your stretchy side. Five more seconds. And release. Okay, turn towards one side. We're going to find a warrior one. Our arms are going to reach up, warrior one. And we're going to let the arms come back. We'll go to warrior three, just for a moment. Then in the right knee, land, warrior one. Let the arms come back, lift off, warrior three. And this can be really slow, you guys. So it's not a race. And if you want to do different hands, you certainly can. So I could have my hands up, warrior one. I could have my hands at my heart, warrior three. So take your time. It's not about getting in 10 or 12 reps. It's really about just moving at a pace that feels grounding. That's really the purpose of our practice is to find this inner anchor within ourselves. That we can feel strong, we can feel supported. Some ways we feel like we're in some semblance of control of the body. Okay. Whatever side has been your front leg, we're going to step into tree pose on that side. So grab that foot, place it on the inner seam of your ankle, your, your calf, your thigh. Let's take the arms and find reverse prayer or grab opposite elbows. Find that inner seam of your standing leg. And that's what needs to root down. So that you're standing more in the center of your thigh bone, not the outer edge. Keep your breath going. It's okay if the foot slides. Sometimes different pants <laughs> or shorts are pretty slippery, so it doesn't really matter. Find the lift from your core to your heart, through the neck. From the big toe, reach to the outer heel. From the baby toe, reach to the inner heel. Okay, you got it. Take a big step wide and then turn that same front leg forward. Find warrior two. I'll let you find any arms that you want. So you can keep your arms down. You can have your arms up. If you like to interlace it, you can interlace, right? If you want to bind your arms. So lots of options. 
You can keep your gaze forward or center. Now close your eyes and really feel the strength of your legs. So feel that front sh uh, shin right over the ankle, front thigh reaching towards the center of your foot. Feel that back outer edge of the foot pressing away so that your outer hip on that left is activated. Elongating the inner thigh line of your back foot. Nice big breath. It's okay that the back hip is kind of tilting forward a bit. The hips are not usually level in this shape. Take another deep breath. We're going to go into a low lunge twist next. So you're going to keep the same front leg back knee up or down. I prefer a block. And we're going to twist. So again, back knee up or down. If your knee is up, you're going to make sure that big toe side and foot has plenty of pressure. Let that front shin release forward as you turn and twist from the root of your belly. You can look down. Or you can gaze up, you're almost there. Remember, whatever you're practicing for, these are those efforts that we can return to when we're in an intense pose to remember why we practice what we're practicing for and to give us that practice of cultivating that patience and discomfort. The ability to breathe through it, to let our body regulate. Good, release, step forward. Rolling up, opposite leg forward for warrior one. So remember, warrior one will turn into warrior three. So as you're ready, taking your time, going at whatever pace keeps you feeling grounded. So that means you only do two iterations of this shape, totally fine. It's okay to lose your balance and feel wobbly. It's part of working on balance, right, is getting to the place where we actually do lose it so we can practice finding it again. You're almost there, a few more seconds and then we'll find our tree pose. So as you feel ready, We'll step together, say uh, opposite, same leg that was your front leg will become your standing leg. Remember to find that inner thigh line before you pick the foot up. Arms inwardly rotate, reverse prayer, or grab opposite elbow. Pull your front ribs in and back so that you knit your core. Then from that integrated core, lift up towards the crown of your head. From your big toe line, reach to your outer heel. From your baby toe line, reach to your inner heel. And that center spots where we're lifting from. It's just a gentle lift as if it got just an ounce lighter as you lift it up. Big breath, it's okay to have quiver zone or to lose your balance. And you can even come out if you want. You can come right back in when you're ready. Nice big breaths, you're almost there. Three, two, and big wide step out. We're finding warrior two. So I'm gonna find that same opening in my chest. You can do something else. Heel to arch alignment. And as I sink into my legs, I wanna feel that front shin reaching forward so that my knee lines up with my ankle somewhat. It's okay if my back hips tilt forward and down a bit. Then with my outer hip, I'm reaching towards that outer foot. Then kind of a lift of my inner thigh up and back so I get that elongation. Soften jaw, shoulders, neck. <sighs> Soften and relax what you can. Breathe through what's activated, what feels challenging. 
be with all the mind stuff that erupts when we do challenging things. <laughs> We want to make space for that too. Okay. As you're ready, we're going to step the feet closer. We're going to do a little bit of Utkatasana twist. So arms reach up and then exhale, twist to one side. Arms reach up, exhale, twist to the second side. If you want more intensity, stay low. So as you twist, it's natural that one knee will come forward. Let's minimize that today and feel more of the core twist. Twist from behind your navel. Remember, you can be straightening your legs to give yourself a little break. Letting that twist ring out, kind of clearing the digestive tract, stoking your digestive fire. Nice work. Straighten your legs, arms reach up. Take a big step back with one of your legs for Parsvottanasana. So I generally have a much longer stance. Take your hands to the small of your back, reach up, and then exhale, trace your thighs as you come down to fold. And I like hands on blocks. Let your head go and relax four sides of your neck. So then you might widen your, shorten your stance. Allow that front hip to draw back. So you can reach from your inner pelvis towards your inner thigh and your foot area of your front leg. So you can fully extend that knee. Feeling the side waist lengthen as you release. Big breath as you Anchor that back heel to be a back anchor. We're going to take our blocks with us. We're going to come up, pivot, turn to the opposite side, readjust your stance, lift your chest, a little back bend, and then pour forward into your forward fold. So again, everyone's different with how wide of a stance and how short or long of a stance. Generally, your shoulders want to line up with the ankle. That's a general guideline, but not to be held to if it doesn't feel right. Now, let's start to draw that outer front hip back so that you can feel the pelvis kind of swing towards the side of your back leg. And from there, we lengthen your spine, but relax the neck, the upper palate, the jaw. Nice big breaths. Feel free to open your mouth, sigh it out. Can I give you a little extra time on this one? So uh, you can either repeat um, downward dog or if you have a wall near you, try a handstand. So you can walk up handstand. So I could kind of find a down dog at the wall. And I could walk up towards a diagonal, right? Um, I may not be straight up and down. And I might hold for a minute or I might come up and down. You could also just do down dog at the wall or repeat down dog or something like that. You can kick up, kick up. But we're going to try and go for somewhat close to a minute. So I'll give you a little extra time because I know I didn't give you much prep for that. So we want to weight the hands no matter what. So even if that's down dog, do that. Yeah, you just walk up and you can be as high up the wall as you want. I'll make it a little easier. So tailbone long, belly draws back in. Nice, Don. Awesome, James. Yeah, it looks good, you guys. Nice work, Jen. Yeah, just relax your head, let it be even longer. Yeah, good job. Okay, stay a little bit longer because I know I didn't give you a full minute. You need to come down though, please do. You're almost there. 10 more seconds. Okay, 
and slowly come down. Awesome, you guys. So we're going to come to a wide leg forward fold. Again, if you're at the wall, you can always just, again, let your sitting bones find the wall and fold on in. So my sitting bones touch the wall. That's about it. My feet are about six, eight inches from the wall, and this is just kind of nice to drape. Or you can just be standing using your blocks like we did at the very beginning of class. So we're gonna have a little bit longer fold here. So make sure you're cozy if you need a block or if you want anything to help your body stabilize and feel more able to relax. So if you can slow the breath down after handstand or whatever you chose. You want to make sure if you're using blocks, the blocks don't press your head back in towards your cervical spine that you actually can feel your head release onto the block. So sometimes it's kind of hard to find just the right setting for that. You might have to adjust your stance with another minute here. So really soak in the breath, see what you can release. Feel free to open your mouth, let those sighs or exhales be vocal, bubble your lips. Okay, ever so slowly, you're gonna place your knees one at a time down on the mat. And we're going to come first to a seat. So um, I'm going to go back to Virasana, knees together, heels wide. So I'm sitting up on a block. You don't have to. So we're going to take the left arm out to the side, inner rotate it, and reach and grab your right elbow if you can. If you need to grab your wrist, you can grab lower. And then kind of, <coughs> excuse me, Pull that right arm down as you let your left ear fall towards your left shoulder. Now broaden that right collarbone. And as your head feels heavy to the left shoulder, feel your right shoulder get just as heavy. Take some deep breaths. Feel free to soften your jaw. Some people like to even kind of turn their head up or down to find an even better spot than just completely uh, left ear and the left shoulder. You might kind of turn your head 45 degrees up or down and kind of play with that. And really track your breath. And kind of noticing as you breathe in, can you send the breath, even if you don't feel that it actually goes there, intentionalize sending the breath down that right side of your neck through the upper back those traps and scalenes, maybe hinge and unhinge your jaw, kind of move it around. And then one more breath. So just listen, you're going to let go of holding on to your wrist or your hand and take your left hand to your left temples and lift your head up nice and slow. And just Take a moment in that stillness just to feel both sides of your neck. Then your right arm will come out, inner rotate, and then reach around and grab somewhere around your left arm, pull down, and then right ear to right shoulder. Then you can broaden through your collarbone so that that left shoulder feels like it elongates from the center line of your body. And as that head feels as heavy as it can towards the right, you feel your left shoulder with the use of your right hand drawing downward. 
And then really tune into your breath and intentionalize sending that breath to the left side of your neck, the upper back, and through those tender areas. Letting that breath be a pathway to release energy, but also to revitalize energy. So if you don't feel like you get a lot of good breathing into the neck, side of the neck or upper back, like this is your time to really feed it some good energy. And then one more really deep breath. And then just let go of holding on to your arm. Let your right hand come around and hold your head and lifting it up really slow. Yeah. Big breath in and out. Come off of your blocks. And we're going to find Baddha Konasana, so soles of the feet together. It's okay for the um, inside arch to roll up. You don't have to uh, press your feet together. And sometimes it's nice to kind of lift your seat to allow your pelvis to tip forward. Some of you might need a blanket. Then lengthening your spine, if you would like to take the arms forward and fold, you can, but you can also press the arms back and fold. Just kind of letting the thighs release wherever they are. And feel free to put blocks. That can be helpful. And those of you who the pelvis just will not reach forward, I find putting my feet up on blocks can help me sit up tall so that I can let the thighs relax without feeling compromised in the SI joint. So you can play with either one of those. Nice big breaths. Hmm. Adjusting as you need. Dropping into the breath. And then slowly coming out. You can sit cross-legged for this. So we're going to have the right hand, uh, I'll use like index and middle finger at the heart, and then left hand at the third eye. Just using your awareness, kind of noticing if you have more energy at the heart or more energy at the head. And it's just a guess, right? You may go, I don't know, it feels the same or I don't feel anything. Well, that's fine. Just, just use your best guess. And then taking a moment, can you send energy if your head has more energy? Can you send energy from your head to your heart? And if your heart has more energy, can you send some energy to your head from your heart so that you feel maybe a little balance of energy between head and heart? So that heart wisdom can inform and color our thoughts. And our intellect can guide our feelings, can be involved. Just kind of send that intention and we'll take one more breath. And then let it go. So I'll give you two options for Shavasana. One is um, that same block work we've been doing a lot, which is head and upper back or spine. Okay, that's one good one. Or you can repeat the neck work we did, which is lying on your back, allowing there to be that uh, kind of the base of the skull on that bone, on that razor blade edge, and just kind of turning your head side to side, relaxing anything in the head. You've been getting headaches or feel kind of cloudy in the head, or um, this is a great one to do. And if you feel like you want to just keep working that um, open heart, you can even go up on the settings. Sometimes that can feel good. And, uh, let your knees knock in. So that I'm using the medium setting. This may not be very restful. So you can roll a blanket on it or place it down. 
So take a moment to get cozy and then you can relax any type of um, structured breath work and you can just let yourself just relax and let go. Letting the breath just be natural. Kind of letting your belly relax. Space around your heart, relax. Your jaw, relax. Space behind your eyes, relax. Allowing yourself to create a little bit of space around your body, within your body. Letting there be space to witness thoughts, emotions, energy, sensations. Letting there be space for questions, for confusion. Letting there be space for knowing, clarity, places in between. Letting there be space for feelings. Letting there be space for tiredness or energy. Letting there be space for boredom, anxiousness. Inviting in all of your experience and allowing there to be space to be with it in a restful, receptive state. You don't have to feel zen. You don't have to feel put together. You don't have to like yoga. You can just reside in your own beingness. In the next few moments, if you would like to move again, start to wiggle your fingers and toes. And then if you feel like moving up to a seat, go ahead and move up to a seat. And then just laying your hands, you can either go hand on head and heart again, and just kind of notice what that's like. Or you can find that Garuda mod, uh, Mudra we've been doing, left hand behind your right and lay it on your heart. And one more time before we close, just noticing the state of your beingness, like noticing your experience in this moment and how the practice has shifted that. Maybe it hasn't. Sometimes good shifts happen and we like our state after yoga. Sometimes we don't like our state after yoga. And the key isn't that we get to the right state or the one that we like, but more that we're able to discern the differences in our state of being, that we're able to stay aware. Because when we're aware, we can make those awesome choices for ourselves and what we need. If we need space, if we need time, if we need rest, if we need to move, if we need to speak our mind, if we need to cry it out. So take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. Let your hands join at your heart. Bow towards your heart, that witness self, that teacher, your wisdom. 
the light in you and the light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. Thank you for practicing, friends. It's awesome to be with you. Thanks for being my anchor in practice. Hope you guys have an awesome day.